Hey guys, Nathan Duck River Honey. I think this is number 11 in my vlog on building a bee business. Uh, where we're at right now is April the 21st, and we're at a critical time point in the season. It's like a turning point. Um, I saw tulip poplar blooming uh, for the first time today. I've been thinking we were going to be a little early, and maybe we are three to five days early, but that's about it. Saw multiflora rose blooming today. I've seen a few blackberries going, and I've worked all of my hives this week, most of them in the last two days. And my home yard out here, I had to super most of them today. Uh, I was in four boxes on most of them, and I had to put a fifth on. And uh, it's, it's encouraging because most of my hives are looking really good. I've got... Um, <clears throat> I've got three, I think three, that want to swarm, and another couple that I'm worried I may need to equalize down. So I'm gonna check on them in the next few days, and if they continue to look a little swarmy, I'll pull them back. But the three out here, um, I went through one of them and was gonna turn it into a Corey Stevens style cell builder. I did my best to find the queen and I could not find her in there. That's the weakness in that system. If you're not good at finding queens in a hive that is in a swarming state, then you can't dequeen it um, unless you use a shaker box or do a tearing off split, something along those lines, it, you know, extreme measures. I wasted a lot of time looking through that hive and uh, never did find her. I did find an emerged queen cell in there, so I don't know what they're doing. They may be superseding, but they had other cells in there. That hive is a problem child, so I'm just, you know, they can do what they want to do. I'll, um, I'll catch them if they swarm in the next few days, and they're going to get a, a different queen. <laughs> if I do catch them, the, the mother hive and the swarm will get a different queen. So I found another little colony that's wanting to swarm like you're not even that big why do you want to swarm they need to be requeened um, i don't want those kind of genetics that is super annoying but on the whole you know i came into uh came into spring with 40 40 42 hives something like that i'd have to check and I have three or four that I'm worried about swarming. I think I've done a much better job at swarm prevention than I have in past years. Uh, I think last year I had four of 22 uh, swarm on me. And this year I'm you know, coming into spring with 40 or 42. And I've got, again, three or four that I'm really worried about. So uh, uh, back to this turning point. Tulip poplar and black locust are the first major flows that we have that kick off in spring. We have some minor flows up to now. You know, bees can build up on it, they can grow on it, but it's not enough to really store a surplus in nectar. So it's black locust and tulip poplar are the two main major flows that, that kick off in late April to early May. So with that uh, starting, Hives are going to turn away uh, swarm preparations and they're going to focus on collecting nectar while they can. So that's, I expect in the next two weeks for that swarming pressure to go down and to start seeing nectar and white wax in, in supers. Um, in the fourth boxes, I'm already seeing white wax being drawn out, uh, which is fantastic. I love seeing that. It's super cool. And I'm excited, excited about that. The next, uh, next two or three weeks is going to be, it's a big deal. You know, I'm relying on honey for cash flow. I'm not selling nukes. I'm not selling queens because I'm need all that stuff to build my numbers but I need, I need this honey to work out so i can try to cash flow further expansion so over the weekend i went to corey stevens place that was a long day on saturday i got up at 3 a.m and was didn't get home that night until 9 p.m um, so sunday i was pretty wiped and monday i got um, splits made 
uh, with his queens, I ended up with 28 of those, so I had to get 28 splits made up. Uh, finished that up on Tuesday. I, I ran out of time before I had to go get the kids. So, and I had to feed everybody and, and stuff. So I finished up late Monday and then um, had to do some on Tuesday. I think those are looking pretty good. Um, you know, I'll check back in a week or two and just see. I hope I get a good take on that. I really hope I get a good take on that. I want those, those queens. I've actually got some orange paint pens I'm gonna paint them with just so I can keep them separate and identify them from everything else. You know, this is a red year. Last year was yellow, the year before was white. So I'm, I'm just gonna use orange um, on those queens to keep them separate. And that way I can get into Harbo testing and uh, VSH queen rearing and, and things like that. I'll have the potential to do that. The first round of splits that I did in mid-March or late March, uh, I went through all of those, queen checked everybody, marked all the ones that I could find, and I think I ended up with about an 84, 85% success rate, which I feel good about. Um, I think I made 25 splits and I'm getting like 21 hives out of it. I got all those moved this week to out yards. Uh, what I did early in the spring is I moved bees into drone flooding yards around a mating yard. And I've used that mating yard and I'm still using it, but the nukes can go to out yards now and uh, grow during the flow. And honestly, I'll prob my plan for that first round of nukes, I've got 20 or 21 of them, I'm going to feed them hard. Uh, if I need to equalize, I will equalize brood frames into them and get them big and strong. And then I'm going to split out of them. Uh, I'll set up some cell builders and split out of them and use them as brood factories uh, for the rest of the year. That, that's my plan. Uh, that's how I want to build my numbers up. And I want to get that done during the flow. Um, I did put a queen excluder in one hive today that's got swarm cells in it. I knocked all those down, put an excluder in the middle of it. So hopefully I can find which half the queen is in and then use that as a builder because I'd like to make another round of queens. Um, I need an excess of queens to be able to requeen colonies and make splits and you know, you just, you can never have too many queens. So prepping for the flow, uh, I had some colonies that would, would not grade out. They were not going to make a honey crop. So uh, I dequeened some of those and combined a nuke in with them. Um, one of the first round nukes that I made. So they should be queen right now. They should uh, hopefully make a honey crop, you know, if they get strong enough, quick enough. Um, I'm also doing queen checks as I go, just make sure everybody is brewed right. And I'm hoping to, there's a turkey out here in the field. That's why I'm looking over here. There's a hen. I think that's my dad's pet turkey. She's hangs around in his field all the time, right behind the house. So I'm planning to do an OAV mic check in the next week uh, before supers get too high. Uh, I want to make sure that I don't have any mite problems. So what I'll do is I'll just hit the hives with a dose of OAV and then see what falls through my screen bottom boards onto uh, sticky boards. I'm not using anything sticky. I've just got the core plast uh, blockers on the bottom. I just pull those out and look at mite counts and it gives me an idea of the whole hive mite counts, whether I've got problems in, you know, going into the flow or I don't have problems. Queens and mites are two things I really want to have a good um, confidence in at this time of year because once I start supering and get into honey extraction and, and all that, it's going to be July before I start doing you know brood nest work again. So I won't see the brood nest on some of those hives for two three months. And um, queens and mites are the two killers um, during that time of year. So I want to make sure they're good going into it and then hopefully they'll be good coming out of it as well. Coming up, I've got so much work to do. I do not know how I'm going to get it all done. Um, I've got to get foundations put in frames. I'm putting boxes of foundation together. Been working on that in my spare time. Put that in quotes. I don't have spare time this time of year. 
Um, I've also got a bunch of boxes I need to put together. I've got a bunch already put together. I've got to, to wax dip a bunch of stuff. I've got three different guys I'm wax dipping a, a load for, and then um, I need to get you know a hundred of my own boxes put together and dipped, um, and I'll feel pretty good about where I'm at at that point. So that's where we're at on woodenware. I've still got to hang paneling and, and um, you know, wall and ceiling paneling in the honey house. I've got a, my best friend is coming in to turkey hunt this weekend and he doesn't know it yet, but we're, I think he's going to help me put some paneling up in the honey house while he's here. Cause that's something you really need more than two hands for. I'm trying to figure out how to do it with just me, but that's, uh, that's something, you know, four by eight sheets of stuff, trying to hang it on the ceiling. It's, um, yeah, it, it would be nice to have some help with that. So I think I'm going to recruit him <laughs> into doing that. We'll trade turkey hunting for work. <laughs> I'd like to say thanks to Thomas Kingsley and Hugh Scheidel. They made donations to the channel. I, guys, it really does help. I, I appreciate it. So question and answer this week. Uh, I've got a couple here. Uh, I've got one from Tim Lacey. He says, I have seriously considered doing what you're doing. You have my deepest respect. I have two questions. <laughs> Number one, who is the guitarist on your audio track? I like that a lot. Uh, the video he was commenting on, I'm assuming that that was uh, The Roll of Pain. It's the name of the song and it's by Martin Klim, K-L-E-M. He does a lot of music for Epidemic Sound. I have to have a subscription to Epidemic Sound uh, for my channel to be able to use that music. Uh, it's basically a, a license. I'm, I'm uh, paying a subscription to them and I get a license to music. And uh, I really do like that song. Uh, I don't know what brain wavelength that guy is on, but it's I'm on the same one. So uh, all of his music is really good. He's got some different stuff, uh, you know, piano solos and guitar stuff and um, Irish folk songs and just all of it I love. It's very different, very eclectic. The second part of Tim's question is uh, looking forward to a video on all medium hives. I haven't done that one yet. I've been procrastinating. I actually shot one here, but uh, the mic was, um, the gain on the mic was too high. It was clipping and sound quality was really bad. And then I wanted to get some specific field footage to put with it and um, so I've been procrastinating on that I don't have it done yet second question is from M and E M acres M and M acres have you done a video on how expensive it actually is to expand I mean you can grow bees but boxes and frames and the amount of money that it costs to buy them certainly control how fast you can expand your apiary so I did do a cost analysis for this medium box beekeeping uh, video that I've been working on and I am paying somewhere around $256 for a hive and it depends on how you define a hive. Um, I'm looking at a triple medium as the brood nest and then I want to allocate three medium supers um, per production colony. So I'm looking at six medium supers, 60 frames, top lid, uh, bottom board, and that's, you know, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, if you look at the same thing, but in a double deep with three medium supers, then it's like 228 bucks. So it's about 12 to 13 percent more expensive to run three mediums than a double deep if you're using three medium supers per. So yeah, it, it gets pricey. Uh, it's a little cheaper if you make your own stuff. I don't know if it's cheaper if you make your own boxes because of the time involved. Um, but if you assemble stuff, you can make that pay. Um, yeah, it, it costs quite a bit. So channel news, I've got some videos with Corey Stevens upcoming. I don't know when I'm gonna get those done. So the way I'm gonna edit this is I'm gonna have uh, part one and part two of working the bee yard with Corey Stevens. There's a ton of good dialogue, a ton of laughs, and you'll learn some stuff from there because there's some good questions, there's some good discussion in there as well. But that's gonna be more of like a long form 
working the bee yard with Corey Stevens type video. And then I've got the uh, in the house video doing the Harbo, the doing the Harbo assay. So on that video, I'm going to try to keep that succinct so that someone who is interested in learning how to do the Harbo assay can watch like a 20 minute video instead of a hour and a half video. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to do. And then I may have some extra footage that's valuable enough that I do something with it. I don't know what, but these files are so big that I've had to split it into the field portion in a, a library and I've got that on my computer and I'm editing it because I've got to multicam three different cameras on that. Uh, and then the in the house portion, I've got almost two hours of footage on four cameras. So if I try to put that all on my two terabyte external drive all at the same time, it, it's, it won't work. It, it just gets too big. So um, my computer's been humming, uh, trying to work all this footage. It, um, it takes a while to process. So I'm hoping that if I can get the editing done today, I'll be able to put the fill portion out tomorrow or Sunday if I've got time. But I've got company coming, so we'll see. And then I'll probably put um, the Harbo part of it out next week or next weekend, some, something along those lines. I've also got a lot of footage I've shot this week of me doing stuff that's cool and educational. I think it's pretty good content, but goodness, when am I going to find the time to get it edited? Um, I, I've just got to find the time. So that's where we're at with the channel. Guys, as always, I need questions to answer every week. So if you've got some, ask, and I'll pick some that are interesting and try to get those answered. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next one.